While the world still believed the Earth was immobile, a man on the banks of the Ganges watched the sky and saw the universe spin. His name was Aryabhata, the genius who discovered zero, calculated time, and wrote formulas that still defy modern physics. Centuries before Galileo or Copernicus, he was already describing the Earth's rotation, and almost no one remembers it. The greatest mathematicians of all time. Episode 17, Aryabhata the First. Aryabhata is also known as Aryabhata the Elder, to distinguish him from the mathematician of the same name who lived about 400 years later. We owe this confusion to Al-Biruni, a mathematician from Uzbekistan who lived in the 10th century and wrote in 990 AD. He seemed to believe that there were two different mathematicians named Aryabhata living at the same time. He thus created a confusion between two different Aryabhatas, which was only clarified in 1926 when B. Datta demonstrated that Al-Biruni's two Aryabhatas were the same person. Aryabhata was born in 76 AD in Kusumapura, now Patna, India, and died in 550 AD, also in India. We know Aryabhata's year of birth, as he tells us he was 23 when he wrote Aryabhatiya, which he completed in 499. We attribute Kusumapura, considered close to Pataliputra, which was refounded as Patna in Bihar in 1541, as Aryabhata's birthplace, but this is far from certain, as is the location of Kusumapura itself. As S. Parmis Warren writes in On the Nativity of Aryabhata I, quote, No final verdict can be given on the locations of Asmaka Janapada and Kusumapura. End quote. We know that Aryabhata wrote Aryabhatiya in Kusumapura at a time when Pataliputra was the capital of the Gupta Empire and an important center of learning but there have been several other places proposed by historians as his birthplace. Some speculate that he was born in South India, perhaps Kerala, Tamil Naidu, or Andhra Pradesh, while others speculate that he was born in Northeast India, perhaps Bengal. G. M. Bongard claims that Aryabhata was born in the Asmaka region of the Vakataka dynasty in South India although the author has accepted that he lived most of his life in Kusumapura in the northern Gupta Empire. However, the claim that Asmaka was Aryabhata's birthplace relies on a comment made by Nilakantha Somayaji in the late 15th century. Currently, most historians believe that Nilakantha confused Aryabhata with Bhaskara I, a later commentator on the Aryabhatiya. It should be noted that Kusumapura became one of the two major mathematical centers in India, the other being Ujjain. Both are in the north, but Kusumapura, assuming it is near Pataliputra, is on the Ganges and is the northernmost. Pataliputra, as the capital of the Gupta Empire during Aryabhata's time, was the center of a communications network that allowed learning from other parts of the world to easily reach it, and also allowed the mathematical and astronomical advances made by Aryabhata and his school to reach all of India and eventually the Islamic world. As for the texts written by Aryabhata, only one survives. However, P. J. Ha claims that Aryabhata authored at least three astronomical texts and also wrote some free stanzas. The surviving text is Aryabhata's masterpiece, the Aryabhatiya, a short astronomical treatise written in 118 verses, which summarizes Hindu mathematics up to that time. Its mathematical section contains 33 verses, presenting 66 unproven mathematical rules. The Aryabhatiya contains a 10-verse introduction, followed by a section on mathematics, as just mentioned, of 33 verses, then a 25-verse section on time calculation and planetary models, with the final 50-verse section on the sphere and eclipses.
There is a difficulty with this layout that is discussed in detail by van der Weerden. Van der Weerden suggests that the ten-verse introduction was actually written after the other three sections. One reason to believe that the two parts were not planned as a whole is that the first section has a different meter than the remaining three sections. However, the problems don't stop there. We said that the first section had ten verses, and indeed, Aryabhata titled the section Set of Ten Stanzas of the Giti, but in reality, it contains eleven stanzas of the Giti and two stanzas of the Arya. Van der Weerden suggests that three verses were added and identifies a small number of verses in the remaining sections that he claims were also added by a member of Aryabhata school in Kusumapura. The mathematical part of the Aryabhatiya covers arithmetic, algebra, plane trigonometry, and spherical trigonometry. It also contains continued fractions, quadratic equations, sums of power series, and a table of signs. Let's examine some of them in more detail. First, we will examine the system of numerical representation that Aryabhata invented and used in the Aryabhatiya. It consists of assigning numerical values to the 33 consonants of the Indian alphabet to represent 1, 2, 3, etc., 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Higher numbers are denoted by these consonants followed by a vowel to obtain 100, 10,000, etc. In fact, the system allows numbers up to 10 to the 18th power to be represented with alphabetic notation. G. Ifra, in A Universal History of Numbers, From Prehistory to the Invention of the Computer, argues that Aryabhata was also familiar with numerical symbols and the place value system. He writes, It is extremely probable that Aryabhata knew the sign for zero and the numerals of the place value system. This assumption is based on the following two facts. First, the invention of his alphabetic counting system would have been impossible without zero or the place value system. Second, he performs calculations with square and cubic roots, which is impossible if the numbers in question are not written according to the place value system and zero. Let us briefly examine some algebras contained in the Aryabhatiya. This work is the first known to us that examines integer solutions to equations of the form by equals ax plus c, where a, b, and c are integers. The problem arose from the study of the astronomical question of determining the periods of the planets. Aryabhata uses the Kutaka method to solve problems of this type. The word Kutaka means to pulverize, and the method consisted of dividing the problem into new problems, where the coefficients became smaller and smaller with each step. The method here is essentially the use of the Euclidean algorithm to find the greatest common factor of A and B, but it also relates to continued fractions. Aryabhata provided an accurate approximation for pi. He wrote in the Aryabhatiya, Add 4 to 100, multiply by 8, and add 62,000. The result is approximately the circumference of a circle with a diameter of 20,000. By this rule, the relationship between circumference and diameter is given. This gives a value of pi equals 62,832 divided by 20,000, which gives 3.1416 which is a surprisingly accurate value. In fact, pi equals 3.14159265, correct to eight places. If obtaining such a precise value is surprising, perhaps it is even more surprising that Aryabhata does not use his precise value for pi, but prefers to use the square root of 10 equal to 3.1622 in practice. 
Aryabhata does not explain how he found this precise value, but some Hindu mathematicians consider this value to be an approximation of half the perimeter of a regular 256-sided polygon inscribed in the unit circle. Others, however, show that this result cannot be obtained by doubling the number of sides. In another interesting article, P.J. Jha discusses Aryabhata's precise value of pi. Aryabhata 1's value of pi is a very close approximation to the modern value and the most accurate among the ancients. There is reason to believe that Aryabhata devised a specific method for finding this value. It is sufficiently demonstrated that Aryabhata himself used it, and several later Indian mathematicians and even Arabs adopted it. The conjecture that Aryabhata's value of pi is of Greek origin is critically examined and found to be unfounded. Aryabhata discovered this value independently and also realized that pi is an irrational number. He undoubtedly had an Indian background, but he surpassed all his predecessors in his assessment of pi. Thus, the credit for discovering this exact value of pi can be attributed to the celebrated mathematician Aryabhatta. Let us now look at the trigonometry contained in Aryabhatta's treatise. He presented a table of signs by calculating the approximate values at intervals of 90 degrees. 90 divided by 24 equals 3 degrees and 45 minutes. To do this, he used a formula for sine of n plus 1 x minus sine of n x in terms of sine of n x and sine of n minus 1 x. He also introduced the versine versine equals 1 minus cosine, into trigonometry. Other rules given by Aryabhatta include the sum of the first n integers, the squares of these integers, and their cubes. Aryabhatta provides formulas for the areas of a triangle and a circle that are correct, but the formulas for the volumes of a sphere and a pyramid are considered erroneous by most historians. For example, Ganithanand, in some mathematical slips from Aryabhatta to Ramanujan, describes as a mathematical slip the fact that Aryabhatta provided the incorrect formula for the volume of a pyramid with height h and a triangular base of area a. He also appears to present an incorrect expression for the volume of a sphere. However, as is often the case, nothing is as simple as it seems, and Elfring in The Area of a Triangle and the Volume of a Pyramid, as well as the area of a circle and the surface of a hemisphere in the mathematics of Aryabhatta I, argues that this is not an error, but rather the result of a mistranslation. This relates to verses 6, 7, and 10 of the second section of the Aryabhatiya, and Elfring produces a translation that provides the correct answer for both the volume of a pyramid and a sphere. However, in his translation, Elfring translates two technical terms differently than they usually have. Without some supporting evidence that these technical terms were used with these different meanings elsewhere, it would still appear that Aryabhatta actually gave the incorrect formulas for these volumes. We have examined the mathematics contained in the Aryabhatiya, but this is an astronomy text, so we must talk a little about the astronomy it contains. Aryabhatta presents a systematic treatment of the position of the planets in space. He gave the Earth's circumference as 4,967 yojanas and its diameter as approximately 1,581.00417 yojanas. Since one yojana equals 5 miles, this gives a circumference of 24,835 miles, which is an excellent approximation to the currently accepted value of 24,902 miles. He believed that the apparent rotation of the heavens was due to the Earth's axial rotation, 
which is a remarkable view of the nature of the solar system that later commentators failed to follow and most changed the text to save Aryabhata from what they considered to be stupid errors. Aryabhata gives the radii of planetary orbits in terms of the radius of the Earth-Sun orbit, essentially their periods of rotation around the Sun. He believes that the Moon and planets shine by reflected sunlight. Incredibly, he believes that the orbits of the planets are ellipses. He correctly explains the causes of solar and lunar eclipses. The Indian belief until then was that eclipses were caused by a demon named Drahu. His value for the length of the year as 365 days, 6 hours, 12 minutes, and 30 seconds is an overestimate, since the true value is less than 365 days and 6 hours. Bhaskara I.I., who wrote a commentary on the Aryabhatya about 100 years later, wrote of Aryabhata, Aryabhata is the master who, after reaching the most distant shores and plumbing the depths of the sea of supreme knowledge of mathematics, kinematics, and spherics, transmitted the three sciences to the learned world. In a time without telescopes, Aryabhata saw farther than any man of his era. His calculations spanned millennia and reached us as an echo of ancient wisdom. And now it is up to us not to let this name be lost to time again. Like, subscribe, and share, because yesterday's knowledge is tomorrow's power.